Some of it I do recognize, but I could not tell you the names of any of them. I did not pay attention in art history. That class sucked. Is there a brick in the fireplace to push? Maybe not yet. An impressive fireplace and surprisingly clean, too, although it, had been, it hadn't been used in a long time. Oh, the fireplace had a generous amount of wood in it, and it, I was relieved to know that I could warm the place up in case I got cold. I'm certainly not good at chopping trees. Good to know, fam. Alright, folks. We have stairs and two doors to go through. Do we want to do stairs or door? Door one or two? One, two. Let's examine some of our inventory while we're at it. Our suitcase. Oh, typewriter case. Oh, that's cool. Car key. That was the car key. Okay. My journal. Clear the ground floor first. Okay. The clock is a little unsettling. All right, if we're going to do the ground floor, um, we've got a, a door by the telephone, a door here in the, the drawing room, the sitting room. Check my corners. I can't really check corners a whole lot. Um, and then upstairs, so... The door in the hall... The door in the, the sitting room, draw, I don't know the difference between a sitting room and a drawing room, or upstairs. By the phone? Okay, we'll do that one. Spooky. Small dining room. I like it. Um, a couple of beautiful vases made of shiny glass were standing on the table. That was a Resident Evil door moment. <laughs> ah! Kind of spooked me there. Oh, we found a liquor! Hell yeah! I certainly wouldn't have minded trying those expensive wines, except that nobody would have been around to pace me. <laughs> oh, chap. <laughs> who, this is your house. Drink up all the old expensive wine. Shit, who cares? I guess that's what's happened when you don't water the plants for a long time. Look, I've been there. I've been there. Oh, sorry, plants. Whatever you were. Oops. Hello. Tablecloth napkins. That certainly isn't my thing. What, do you have no class? Some useless junk. My guy, nothing is useless junk in a game like this. Honk, honk. Moogie, you've played it. Anybody else? Certainly not us, since we don't know how to use the inventory. <sighs> Guilty. Ooh, a study. All right. 
Is this the other door? Just curious. Sweet. That is the other door. Okay. We've made a loop. That's fine. Whoops. Cool. All right. What's in here? You've played it, Moogie, but it's been a long time. Yeah. Did you ever finish it? Do you remember? The glass was empty. Pity. I could have used a drink. Go we'll go in there and get one. How many sober writers and authors do you know, my guy? Come on. Cold to the touch. Whoa. Ooh. No, smoking can kill you. Especially when the cigars are decades old. Yeah, they're probably a little dry. <laughs> they're gonna be a little dry, friend. So maybe not. Does it spin, though? <gasps> Incredible. It's the perfect game. Now, if there are any animals for us to pet, it will truly be flawless. Perfection. Oh, a huge collection of books of uh, books was impressive. I could have gladly spent days going through them. How not to write an interactive fiction by H.A.S. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Several trophies for remarkable accomplishments adorn the room. Most of the clocks are not working. Who? What is this? A diploma granting the title of construction engineer to James T. Blackwood. Oh. That is the manner that we are in. What did it say? Construction engineer. Do any of you open a secret passage, perchance? Do you? Oh. The Grasshopper Lies Heavy by Hawthorne Abdinson. Oops. It was just some boring and annoying book entitled Worlds of Mist. Spelled M-Y-S-T in relation to the game Mist? Her chance? Yes. Love that. Oh boy. Alright, here we go. I'm um, taking this as James T. Blackwood. We are not reading the entire journal with an accent, though, because it's going to get old quick. Uh, February 6th, the construction of the rail railway, blah, 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 railway bridge is almost complete and went quite smoothly. It took longer than I expected, yet I wish it would have lasted longer. I will be very sad to leave South Africa. I've become so attached to it, its culture, its arts, over the past few months that I can't help feeling as if it was already a part of me. I will surely return someday. Soon, hopefully, although I'm afraid there is a great deal of work to be taken care of back in old Britain. Fortunately, I made good friends here who are ecstatic about my new appreciation of their country. They have offered me some wonderful objects as a token of gratitude, which I have already created and got ready to ship, along with many trinkets I bought myself. It looks like I'm about to start a very substantial collection. It's a good thing Catherine agreed to move into our new home, although I fear several renovations will have to be made, even more if I'm uh, intending to start a serious new hobby. It seems I'll have to get back to work. John Patterson has just told me some natives are causing trouble. A very unfortunate thing, although I'm secretly rejoicing. What does that mean? 
February 12th. The natives won't leave. It's not like they're causing trouble so much as they're unsettling our workers. The only complaint so far has been distraction. They just stand still between the trees, staring at us without blinking an eye. I've watched them for a few minutes, and they truly seem like some tenebrous statues. At first, I, it was just annoying, but lately it has become downright creepy. They seem to be stalking us. So it's not like they're hindering the construction, but there is a general uneasy feeling as if they were about to jump at us at any moment. I think I will hire some protection as a means of precaution. Oh no! Alright. Alright, we can do it. it. Alright, I'm going to leave it on this page real quick and I will be right back. BRB. So you can read it. I mean, you probably can't see it. That's really small. But I'll be right back. And we will read it.
We're back. Had to fuel up so I could do all this reading. Of course we would pick up the big journal first. Knowing what we were in for. Ugh. Alright. So, again, we're in South Africa. Building a railway. Natives have been creeping on them. But that's as far as we got. All right, say February 15th. Fascinating. I've been looking into these natives. They live in a nearby village and are a very small group. Yet they seem to manage quite well. I had thought of them as quite uncivilized tribe, but their movements are calculated and one can perceive a sense of careful organization in their ranks. Oddly enough, they seem to be very brutish. And their aspect looks awful, although I couldn't take a good look at their facial features as I followed one of them completely on my own, and it could have been dangerous getting any closer. Also, the village is poor and very rough, but some of these shacks leapt out at us as inviting or special. It made me very curious. I will try to come closer tomorrow. February 16th. My second expedition to the village of the natives has been foiled by an unexpected problem at the bridge. I'm afraid it was due to a slight miscalculation on my part, an indication that I should be focusing more on the task at hand, yeah, and put my sudden love for all African things aside for a moment. It was my fault, and I accept it. Don't let the distractions take over, dude. Somebody's gonna get hurt. <laughs> February 20th. They, they are at it again, lurking beyond the forest. It's amazing how they have changed our perception of the surroundings. At first we were delighted by the quiet nature of the place. Now we fear what horrors might be concealed, concealed in that dark and foreboding cloak of trees. The tops loom above us, overshadowing the bridge, a, and strange noises haunt our meals. Ooh. Even the river telling ungodly secrets. We could be, of course, a bit more sensitive towards distractions, but I can't help feeling the area has, in fact, become more sinister. And yet, I'm still looking forward to satisfying my curiosity about the tribe. No, white boy. No. You should leave. You don't belong there. February 24th. At last, I found something more about the neighboring tribe. This is an incredible finding, and I just can't withhold my excitement. Some elders at the local town happen to know about them, but only through stories they heard. The most surprising thing is that the tribe was assured to be extinct long ago. But according to my vague descriptions, the elders think that we could be dealing with a legend here. Everything they ever learned of them was during their childhood, when the tribe was stalking the town, much in the same, they, same way they had been stalking us. People used to call them... Huh? Is that it? I think it's D apostrophe apostrophe L A H A Delam. I'm going to write it down. doesn't help that we can't write something that's right in front of us. Right. I'm going to go with Delam. As such was the sound of screams heard echoing late in the night. They'd come out into the streets and see an evil glitter atop a hill in the distance. Some would say it was a fire. Others, the cursed spirits... A spirit of an ancestor god. Whatever it was, they say the bright light amid those fantastic screams was bone-chilling. The macabre scene would suddenly stop just as it had begun out of nowhere, never to be seen again in days to come. Intervals between those horrible nights became longer and longer, until they were soon faded into oblivion. The tribe apparently had retreated back into obscurity until now. They were later known as the Dal Dalmar. Dahal Dal... Dalmar, Dalmar, a rather more scientific name, although none of the people I spoke with could possibly remember its origin. I find it ex extremely surprising that nobody has ever heard about this tribe with the exception of a few townspeople. They must be incredibly rare, and judging by the stories passed on from generations in the town, very old. 
February 27th. I will confess that I've become nearly obsessed with this strange tribe. I see them as the most prized goal of my appreciation towards all South African things. A dangerous yet irresistible reward. Come on, my dude. They're people. They're not a prize. You messing with things that you ain't got no purpose messing with. I feel as if they were my discovery. Your hubris. I simply have to study them before leaving. I fear I won't have the chance to ever again. And has it has become an important goal of mine, even more important than finishing the bridge. Oh, no, no, no. You, you goofing. You goofing, child. Mm -mm. March 4th. Finally, I have managed to see them. My God, what a disturbing spectacle. Rude. When we arrived, they were moving around the village very slowly without speaking or communicating with each other each minding his or her own business, completely alien to the rest of the world. They were filthy-looking, coarse, and downright disgusting. Okay, rude. I couldn't see any weapons, but they could have been stored somewhere. It was all very strange behavior in a tribe. They must be quite unique. Then, as if they all had all suddenly become possessed by some wild spirit, they began shaking spasmodically and screaming like mad. Some of them dropped to their knees and lifted their heads to the sky, eyes blank, and moaning in an indescribable way. Two of them walked away, still in that monotonous and slow manner, and in great contrast to the rest of the scene, into a shack. The next minute they brought out into the open an odd-looking mask, its shapes, colors, and overall looks while unsettling, were mesmerizing, and I felt instantly hypnotized by it. I rendered my modest collection of African curiosities into dull and uninteresting items. The mask was very ominous, and the whole tribe seemed to greatly revere it. Soon, they began to gather around it and move in circles, fluttering and chanting in, chanting a guttural psalm. Judging by their mo. Judging by their motions and aspects of the whole ritual, it must have been some kind of war ritual. I'm not sure how to explain what happened next, as I feel my pulse is already throbbing. Words fail me to recount the most disturbing thing I've ever witnessed. One of the male villagers walked into the middle, near the mask, by his own will. <laughs> war never changes. That's right, Road Rash. Um, middle. Near the mask by his own will. It was... An almost automatic act. All of a sudden, the remaining members became silent. I can't tell for how long it lasted, but I was afraid to breathe. I think... Dalby? Dalby. And the others were also scared. They wouldn't even blink. I remember being soaked wet and expectant. That's... There are other ways to say you were sweaty. Other... Besides... So, soaked wet and expectant. That, come on. This guy's a little, everybody nasty. The silence was so unnatural. Then a few members separated from the people circling the mask and jumped on the single villager, beating him to death. What the heck? To be completely faithful to the events, the small crowd tore him apart. They grabbed his legs in two, in twos, And twos and threes? Oh, okay. Yep. And twisted them in a manner I dare not describe. His face was disfigured with their bare fingernails and teeth, and the torso soon disappeared under the frenzied tangle of hands. In a matter of a few minutes, the villager was turned into a red sack of bones. Not one of the attackers had the compassion to snap his neck during this sickening process. All was very methodical, as if it was just another mundane task. The most terrifying aspect, though, was that the victim didn't even cringe. The silent was so deep, I could hear his flesh ripping. I would expect any living creature to scream its guts out in such a condition. I can't tell whether he was drugged or half asleep, but I, didn't, I did recognize him dancing like everyone else before walking into the middle of the circle. It was the most outrageous and sadistic sacrifice I've ever heard of. I don't think I'll ever forget what I saw. My intentions of approaching further, even if they didn't have any weapons at hand, vanished. Those creatures, I dare not call them human beings, could have killed my whole company in a blink of an eye with their rage. They seemed to be completely out of themselves and willing to destroy anything intruding into their path. 
While the images of the sacrifice still haunt my thought, I still can't seem to forget that mask. It was so, uh, deceptively simple and yet perfect in its design. I haven't seen it. Why well, we got some tape here? Are we missing a page? Oh, it looks like we're missing some. Uh, I haven't seen anything like it. I surely would love to take a better look. I feel the Dalmar, dangerous as they are, could be our most important ethical finding in decades. What I've seen today is crimes for some further investigating. I just can't leave them like that. I would never forgive myself. And the mask. That mask! I was ecstatic 